everyone, welcome back to my channel, Carol here, um, and my channel is Oak House Journals, if you don't know. So this is the next video in my step-by-step -step process for making the little mini trifold journals that um, I so love to make, as you know. And this is just to take you um, along the next step of that process. I've now more or less finished decorating all my pages. Um, I say more or less because um, I tend to carry on tweaking and adding little bits um, quite a lot, even when I've considered that I've finished my pages. Um, and that can happen right up to the very last minute before I send out my, um, my journals. But I'm more or less happy with what I've got at the moment and I'm ready to move on to the next stage which is sewing my signature together and sorting out my cover. So just finally to let you see what I've done in terms of decorating my pages since the last time we spoke. Um, I explained that I had now started working from the centre through to the back, the reason being because I didn't have this page and I created this page and then I just kind of carried on with what I was doing, working from the centre through to the back. Um, the only thing I've done differently is put a little label on and some lace. Um, here I've just added some touches. I've This was a uh, pocket and I've just popped in a little um, ticket uh, journaling spot if you will in there and I liked the green to pick up the green off here added a little bit on the bottom there and some over here over the page um, I don't think I've done anything different here from the last video but I have done something different here this was magnetized I've just put in two little tiny um, vintage tickets um, in that pocket and the two tags that I had in there I've just decorated those with some um, remnant rubs and tied off the long threads to create slightly smaller ones and instead of popping them behind they are now located in the pocket so that's that um, nothing on this page other than to put a little bit of Edith Holden book text down the side um, to decorate that page. This page I hadn't done anything with, it was just plain book text so I've created a lace pocket and this tag to go in it. So the backing as you can see is a computer card um, layered up with some Edith Holden book text, um, an image and a little bit of collaging at the bottom with some tiny tags this one in German this one plain some lace down the side and flipping over there's just a little bit of um, carbonized letter and a bit of lace there so that now decorates that page um, oh had I done anything here I can't remember to be honest um, I'll run you through it. This is just a glassine bag folded in half, um, laid up at the bottom with some book text, some lace, the word believe. I've got a journaling card in there which I've stitched, inked, put a bit of lace and collaged on the back. There we go. And that goes in the back pocket. It can go in the front pocket. Um, I've started getting to the stage now where I'm not filling all the pockets. I'm just leaving them. Um, I may well put things in, but she's becoming a chunky monkey. So this is when I have to start reining back in with the things that I want to do in um, or on my pages. Um, I've done a uh, little bit of fussy cutting here just to make a point of interest on this page little bit of lace across the bottom and again here down the side here so Edith hold an image zigzagged um, to make a little bit of a Franken page scenario with some book text and some lace and then um, this wraps around the page and it's just a plain journaling spot using observer book pages and I've left this plain um, sometimes I get carried away decorating everything so um, 
I think it's nice sometimes just to leave things plain. Um, I don't know whether I'm right doing that or not, but sometimes I think um, you can over decorate or certainly I can over decorate. So that's what it looks like wrapped around my page. When you open it up on the reverse, I've made this tag to clip to the page. Beautiful image of a Madonna lily with some of this tassel lace on the bottom, some trapped lace at the top through the eyelet and just plain on the back and that will just clip on this page. Then we have the vellum page, well I've stitched round that, I've left it plain um, and similarly, I'm just going to close that down and similarly on the other side, so when you open it up, because I just think this is lovely and I liked the um, yellow uh, images or flowers here. When you open it up, I've created a vellum pocket and let me just move over to one side for you. I've created a vellum pocket and there's a genuine um, Kodachrome slide in there with some remnant rubs on the pockets. Um, and then on this side, I've again done some more fussy cutting of some primulas and this tag. I think I've shown you this tag before, but I have to say it is my favourite. I love this one of all the tags. I've created for this little album, um, this little journal rather. I love this one. I'm tempted to keep it, but no, it's it's it was made for this little journal, so in it goes. Um, some more fussy cutting on the reverse. Tracy Fox um, uh, label. And I think I'm getting now to the stage where I've shown you these pages, but just very quickly... This I've stitched on, this is a lovely image, um, I've stitched it on, I liked all this on the reverse so I've left it plain as is and I have a little pocket here which I've just put a piece of paper inside, some ledger paper for the time being. Now that is going to be a really difficult pocket to have anything major in it because it will come very close to the spine so I just think it might be a nice little secret spot to put um, something that you're not going to take in and out too often and something that isn't too bulky so something like a journaling card would be too bulky but a little piece of paper with a secret message on might be nice to pop in that pocket and then over the page this tag I've made with some flag irises on, just plain, and that will clip on the reverse. Let me, I like so. And then all these other pages further back you've seen, so I'm not going to go through those, but I will go through from the centre working back this way. So on the reverse, if you remember, this was just a plain page. I love this image. Wasn't sure what I was going to do down here. And I wanted to have a go at using these um, ribbon crimps, I call them. Um, and because this is fairly fragile paper, it is Edith Holden, but it is fairly fragile. I've just put a whale tail, glued a whale tail tab at the top so that these um, little silver paper clips don't mash up the edge of the paper. So I'm quite pleased how that came out as a, a little dangle. Um, if you remember, I said I was going to make a journaling spot using this image. So I've lined it with uh, tea stain paper, done a little bit of collaging on either side to hide my magnets, stitched and inked all the way round, edged it with some lace, put a little tiny image of a leaf and a mother of pearl button. So that's magnetises shut like so. Um, and then the whole flap opens up to give a journaling spot. Over the page, um, if you remember I said that I was going to stitch on some tea stain paper, which I've done and inked and put on here one of the flip, out, flip outs, as I said I would. On this side, I love this image and wanted to keep it, so I've put some very pale green um, paper 
as a little journaling spot there and I've torn the edges and left the threads loose and then underneath I've put a vintage ticket and created a tiny belly band with another vintage ticket tucked underneath over the page similar to the other image towards the front of the book I've put some more um, Edith Holden book text down the side and here again this was just a page of book text I like these contemporary tickets but I quite like them and I've just included a tea stained piece of paper underneath as another little journaling spot and I think oh no this was a new page wasn't it loved this image um, and wanted to keep this a fairly plain delicate page love this image as well so I've backed it on to some book page which is a paley green blue edged it with some lace and it made it a side tuck by stitching it in and I've just put some um, vintage book page behind it and then this is the tag that I've made for the reverse page and computer card on the back with some Tracy Fox labels and that just goes on there mother of pearl button and some stitch lace at the top um, this page I've left as a journaling spot but this is an over the page tag so it looks like so and like that so in this side there is a card that comes out of a side pocket and I can get it in there and this is what the card looks like inside with a journaling spot on this side which is some lovely grid paper with a little bit of ornate detail at the bottom there and then on the reverse a bit of lace at the bottom and then a pocket with a tiny tag and I wanted the tag to be blues to marry in with this and similarly with the lace but also because this is blue grid paper so that just goes over the page of that journaling spot and then finally we're on to the vellum page here I've just done some layering up with some washi some stitching all the way around flip it open again some more layering up with more washi um, a postage stamp and I've sewn in a glassine bag snip the top to make a thumb hold because there's a cigarette card in there a vintage one some remnant rubs on the bottom and then just another tag here plain tag quite a long one which clips on to that page and then over the page and I think this is the last page that I decorated this is a collage so I've stitched on various layers of printers brown masking paper some book vintage book pages also stitched and then this lovely flag iris and if you remember this was the one I was considering for the front cover um, here I've used um, another fussy cut image and done the same layering as I did on this page but this time what I decided to do was leave it open so I quite like having this little snippet of um, French handwritten text just tucked in that pocket because it actually looks like it is part of the collage but it isn't there is a little secret pocket in there and also another one behind here so I just thought I would leave those in there and then that's as far as we've gone in terms of decorating oh yes there is one other thing um, further down here I created this journaling card to go in this top tuck spot up there and on this page um, I've included one of these little floating pockets made out of craft card and decorated the back 
and this has a little bit of vintage paper with some prose inside and then I've done a fabric flip up to reveal that lovely um, orchid there so that's where I've got to um, I still might as I say do a little bit more tweaking in terms of the decoration but what I do now is um, if I was going to stitch my journal together as you can see she's getting quite chunky so I have to um, rein in in terms of um, anything now that I put inside her but what I would do now is I would stick um, stick no I wouldn't I would stitch my signature together and how I do that is I'm not going to show you on camera because it's very fiddly I've never done it before um, I may do it in the future but I for me I would not want to ruin um, this journal now after all the work that I've put in in it um, over the last few few days or so um, I wouldn't want to ruin it, ruin it by messing up on the stitching and for me that is something that is really easy to do. So what I tend to do now is I will um, measure down the centre fold of my journal and I will find, I'm looking for a pencil but I can't find one, so what I will do is I will use these ziggers. <laughs> I'll get my words out today. Lord, I must be drunk. Um, I will mark out roughly where the centre is. And then I will mark out um, about half a centre from my top and my bottom of my page. Um, and put a dot. And then between the centre and the top, I will find the centre point again. And put another dot. And similarly, between my centre and my bottom um, mark I will also find the center and put a dot and then those will be my five holes for my five hole pamphlet stitch now somebody has already asked me if I do three or five hole pamphlet stitch um, it's entirely up to you what you want to do I like doing a five hole pamphlet stitch I like the um, thought that there are um, my, my signature is much more secure by having five holes in than three holes. Um, I just think it gives a tighter binding if I'm or stitching if I'm um, if I'm doing that. So once I've put my tiny little dots in pencil down that centre fold, I use one of these. Let me just lift this to one side. <clears throat> I use one of these, and it is for um, book binding. And it is for making your holes in your um, signatures. Um, you don't need one of these. You can make your own. Um, I think Nick the Booksmith has um, done a tutorial on how to make these. Um, I was lucky enough. This is one for um, proper book binding. Um, and it was um, a present. So it's absolutely lovely and it's invaluable. I don't actually use this, which um, you can put in the centre of your signature like that and do your holes that way. I don't tend to use that. What I tend to do is put it in like so and just use this and keep my signature as closed as possible when I'm making my... Um, my holes. Now what I tend to do is I will um, mark these, mark the centre and then I will put the whole of my signature down in this brace I call it and then push my, um, I can't remember what this is called, my all all the way through my signature. I don't separate my signature because that way you run the risk of your holes not being aligned. Um, what I also do is before I actually put the whole of my signature into my brace, I will work through from the center. I first off, I take out all my tags, um, any inclusions, and I will work through from 
my centre through to the back doing this. I will put my metal ruler into that fold and close it up. And then I will take my next page and I will align it where I want it to be in relation to this page and I will close it up. And each time I keep my ruler in the centre, maintaining the pressure all the time. And if I take my hand away from the left hand side where the fold is, I will grip it on this side to stop everything moving. And what I will do is I will work my way through, making sure that my pages are pushed as tight as I can get it into that centre crease all the time. And I will just work my way through front to back all the way doing this, making sure it's pushed in tight, tags come out as I say, and I will just work my way through front to back. So I'm actually pushing slightly here to get a nice tight close pressure along this side and as I've taken my hand away I hope you can see my finger is white here I'm holding this tightly it's not red like that I've got a tight grip on this to make sure I'm holding it in place and it doesn't slip if it does slip I start again and that way I make sure that I'm just going to move this out of the way I'm doing this to make sure that I get a really good tight crease of these papers in there. So, as I say, I will work all the way through my journal doing that, my signature doing that. And then what will happen when I get to the end, it's all like this, nice and tight. What I then do is I get hold of these. Now, I haven't a clue what these are. They're just clamps of some sort and they were a stocking filler, oh, probably about five years ago. But they are rubberized on the end so they don't mash up my papers. You can use bulldog clips or whatever you like. Um, but what I will do then is I will put one of these between the centre fold pages and my journal so that I pinch my pages all together like so and what will happen is it will hold your pages in place but it will also give you time to now it's rooking here because I've got some inclusions in here um, but what it does is it maintains that fold and that pressure for you but you because I've just clipped it on and I didn't um, maintain the pressure and uh, with the ruler going all the way through, I've got this rooking here. But you will get a little bit of movement in your pages. And all I tend to do is just adjust those pages one at a time with these clips after I've got to this point where my signature is all together. And once I've done that and they're held in place with the clips, I will then put it inside my cover and what in the crease that I wanted and one by one realign these clips so that the cover is trapped in against the signature. And then once I've done that, I put the whole thing inside my brace and punch my holes down through the signature and through the cover. And if you've maintained your pressure all the way along using your ruler, or, or I find if I've maintained my pressure all the way along using my ruler and then one at a time um, adjusting these clips, I will find that when I do the piercing using my brace that I will come out along the spine perfectly. Um, now that's how I do it, I don't know how anybody else, well I do know how other people prefer to do it, but that I found is what works for me. 
um, and so that's what I will be doing next um, to stitch my signature into my little journal um, but before I do that what I will be doing is finishing off my cover as you saw these are all still loose and as I've mentioned in my previous video um, I've left them like that because I will now stitch round the outside edge of my cover and ink it and then I will attach these so the images are on top of my stitching. By stitching round the outside here um, it will also stitch these flaps into place but before I do that I will put a bead of glue. I'm off camera sorry about that. Um, as I said, these, these flaps are loose at the moment, so before I do my stitching on the front side, I will put a bead of glue um, down the side of each of these and glue them in place so that it gives me reinforced um, strength so that it's glued and stitched for these pockets. So that's it. That is what I plan to do next. Um, I hope you could follow all that and it wasn't too garbled. Um, um, so still a few bits and bobs left to do. So I will come back to you um, when I have done those extra little bits and bobs in relation to the cover and in relation to stitching my signature into the cover so that you can have a look at the very last final step that I need to do to complete my mini, uh, my mini journal. Thank you so much everybody for watching as always. Do take um, great care, stay safe out there and certainly um, keep happy, keep smiling. We can um, beat this coronavirus. Take care everybody. Bye bye now.